I know you guys have learned a lot with regards to the rabbit farming. Um, usually there are lots of questions, but those questions will come from different angles, right? Now I want to go into another uh, topic with him. Like I said, I knew him about five years. I've known him for five years now, right? I knew he had lots of rabbit done. He has now on the farm. But um, I interacted with him some time back and he told me he lost everything everything completely on the farm um it's surprising and sometimes it's also heartbreaking that you you raise rabbits and you lose everything at once eddie yes, talk to us uh well, i think i would just since we are here this is mm -hmm. where the whole thing started from. okay and actually this is the first cage okay uh, so for those people as i said you can build the cages i mean as and when mm -hmm. so this was my first Mm -hmm. Second, we used to have a third one here, but unfortunately it collapsed. Okay. So, got you going. You switched it. Okay. okay, so with that side of the story. So, guys, I'm trying to look for good lightning. Let me see if I can get it from this angle so that we talk from. The, yeah, this side is better. Okay. So, let's do it from this side. Yeah. Okay. So, we are listening. Okay, so with that side of the story, it so happened that I think it was around October three years ago. And the extension, a quick extension officers came around again trying to mobilize. They wanted to even take us to the national level. Okay. So, and honestly, around that time, I had also upped my game, increased my dough units because now business was, you know, quite Boom. good. But of, unknown to us, there was a viral situation going on around. Mm -hmm. And uh, the mode of contact was that anybody who moves from an infected farm directly to yours has that chance of transferring them onto yours. Mm. So the quick extension officer left one farm to our place Ooh. and that's when the whole, the whole thing started. But unfortunately, we didn't know it was that. Mm. So I had one female here, in fact, it was pregnant. It's a oh. sad story. <laughs> and I think it was about three or four days to deliver it. And we just woke up one morning. As usual, we tended to them and then everything was fine. Only for us to finish feeding them and realizing she's dead. Wow. Meanwhile, we saw it alive, alive and strong. And strong. And only wow. within the space of 10, 20 minutes, it just passed away. But then we took it that fine. Maybe something internally mm -hmm. happened and we learned. So then within two days, another one happened in this cage. Oh, wow. Then we realized that it started happening. But for the subsequent ones, you could see they become weak. They cannot eat. Then sometimes they become very rowdy in the cage. Mm. So then I took one or uh, one dead Mm -hmm. Sample and then I took one week sample to our veterinary clinic in Nosu. Okay. But till now we, they couldn't even diagnose it. <laughs> oh goodness, goodness. So, but it was later on that we, the news came out that there was some viral infection going around the country, uh, but it had started in Accra. Mm. And then I, when I went to the lab, I also met somebody who unfortunately had gone through that experience. Mm. But with him, somebody had brought a rabbit all the way from the Volta region into his farm and by the following morning, everything mm. gone. So upon consultation with the extension officers again, as usual, because they, no matter what we do, we need to consult them. And they were give, they said, no, because we don't know what is going on, it's advice, we just dispose everything. everything. So you can imagine having to kill... I mean, I had almost 300 rabbits. Three? Oh, goodness, 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 goodness. And within a space of two weeks, mm. they were just dying. Two weeks? It got to a point, now we couldn't even just, we had to just leave the hole, just like dug one big pit, ready to just bury them, because you had mothers, unborn babies, some delivering within that week. Oh, it was it painful. Was, it was very painful. It was so sad. It is painful. It was so sad. And the, 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 what really hurt me was having to kill a pregnant rabbit. <laughs> Oof. Guys, <laughs> you see, these are some of the difficult choices you have to make as a farmer. It's not only about uh, the glamour that comes with it, right? You, you have a passion, you want to do it and stuff. Sometimes you have to make executive decisions, right? So I'll share one with you, just as he mentioned. So recently, one of my rabbits uh, gave birth, right? And whilst it was cleaning them, I like to watch the whole process. So it was cleaning them, I was observing it, and um, my mom called me. So I just went to her and came back. It was just like two, three minutes. Yeah. And when I came back, it has bitten off the leg. leg. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right to the stomach, stomach area. Yeah. And then the second back leg also has been bitten off, oh, right? Yeah. 
And for something like this, I had to make a decision yeah. to end the life of that young, young one. one. Yeah. Now, mind you, it was lying down quietly. It was not even in pain. You can't yeah. see anything. Yeah. But I saw the blood. And I yeah. know that if I leave it, ants will follow that trail yeah. and come to yeah. it and come and hurt the other, the other one. Yeah. And I was also thinking to myself, if I leave it, how will it survive, survive. going yeah. forward? Yeah. You know? Yeah. And so these are some of the things you need to know when you want to actually go into rabbit farming because Charlie, it's not easy and some of the decisions are very radical yeah, yeah. but you have to be ready to make them yeah. look at him because he wants to save the farm he had no other choice but to kill a pregnant Charlie, not even one but yeah, well, yeah quite a number of them you get it and uh, see okay one aspect you went to the veterinary uh to to give and they haven't been able to diagnose anything no. Uh, how do you run your farm? Do you run with medications or you run purely organic? How do you run your farm? Okay, as I said, because I did my research, mm -hmm. I, I want to say at least I did my research very well. Okay. One secret to this whole thing is about clean environment. Mm. If you look at the animals themselves, mm -hmm. they have a way they clean themselves. Mm. So naturally they need clean environment. Don't think because rabbits are found in the bush so they are not clean. It's mm. a lie. <laughs> they just need clean lie. environment. Yeah. That is how come we try to wash this place and disinfect at least as often as we can mm. so with that i've seen that that is a system that has kept us away from disease as i said our friend let's say let me use five people mm. if i have five people starting off from my farm almost every time they will call you oh eddie i'm ex experiencing this in my farm and i tell them truthfully i have no idea because i haven't experienced that mm. and mm. you go there and you realize that somebody sweeps the farm maybe every two weeks once oh. every two weeks oh. you have urine you have you know droppings all around it's a whole lot so that one you're already inviting just as you say cleanliness is next to godliness <laughs> so i think and we treat them as part of the family. Although okay. we are still killing them as business wise, yes. but at least you still give that extensive hand to them. So that is one secret. Give them a clean environment. Mm. But then I have the agri as backup, the veterinary officers I mean as backup. Mm -hmm. But I don't often do medication. Okay. Because of the meat that is going to be consumed. Mm. Because every medication you do, you need to know how long it has to take before you sell off the meat. For someone to for eat. For someone to eat, mm -hmm. you know, and mm -hmm. I don't want any complications and any issues. Mm -hmm. But thank be to God, the cleaning of the place has also been a very great source of... I'm, uh, I'm glad you raised that topic. Yeah. Guys, um, administering medication, maybe some will say when they are one month old, administer this medication, administer yeah. that and all that kind of... See, all those are good. But always try to get the right information yeah. before you do it because every medication you give uh, has a timeline to yeah. it uh, before someone can eat mm -hmm. that meat. Yeah. If you don't take care, you will just kill someone mm -hmm. and yeah. it's not a good thing. Yeah. How did you come out of this heartbreak okay. to start all over again? Charlie, you, you get some strong heart. Uh, well, that is where we say if it's not given to you from above, sometimes <laughs> you can't do it. See, no, if you do it. Yeah. <laughs> It, okay, but this whole thing started with how mine ended, my case of the viral infection mm. ended. Almost all the farms I visited or had suffered that casualty, mm -hmm. lost everything. Mm. But I was fortunate, or I call myself, I was blessed to have eight. Mm. That wasn't infected. That wasn't infected. Healthy, strong, nothing. Okay. And then, okay, so when I had that eight, I thought, of, oh, fine, maybe it's over. Mm. So let me just go and get another stock. So I want to buy 10 more, mm -hmm. but unfortunately for me, those 10 that I brought in got infected and died. So in my attempt to start again, in fact, I lost money. Ooh. And after the 10, I went back for another three or four or something from a friend. They also came to die. So I decided, okay, fine, let me just stick to my eight. eight. But then truthfully, I realized, you know, this eight may have been immune to the virus, mm. but it still doesn't mean the virus is gone. gone yes. So I, in fact, I started production with them again. Okay. And uh, so I think they gave birth to about 10 or 20 of them. So we just decided, well, let's wait for the 10 or 20 to be matured. Mm -hmm. And then we just... Fortunately, the, the, the virus wasn't something that was, wasn't human friendly. Okay. It, was, okay. it, it didn't contaminate the meat. Okay. So it, it okay. So okay. Good for consumption. Okay. Right. So okay. I just waited for the 10 or 20 of them to mature and mm -hmm. then we disposed of all of them. Mm -hmm. And then we disinfected the whole place and okay. left it for I think almost one and a half years. Wow. One and a half years. Yeah. No production. Nothing. Nothing. 
not a single rabbit. Wow. <laughs> not a single rabbit. So wow. after this... that, I guess, I think it was just, I think a year or two ago. We, mm -hmm. are, we are in March now. No, we are in April. We are in April, sorry. Yeah. So yeah, two years ago, October. Wow. Yes. Guys, so it's still not up to full two years, but yeah. it's one and a half years now. We started again. Your your wooden cages. Yeah. The environment it looks good. It's clean. Guys, yeah. no smell, no single smell here. I'm telling you. Um. Why did you decide to go with the wood cages? I'm sure you've seen some nice metallic yeah. cages around. Yeah. yeah. Why do you still stick? with this yeah is there a reason or you just don't want to move and all that stuff no you know with the, with the i realized with the metal cages mm. um i'll just say it looks good mm -hmm. but you know having to do maintenance mm. becomes a problem because okay mind you you are not a welder mm. and mm. With, with with the metal cage every maintenance you need to call on an external body to come and do it to come and do okay. it but I, with, with the wooden cages I mean, I have my saw, I have my hammer, I buy my nails. So, did you do all this yourself? No, I, I contacted the, someone to the do it. Yeah. Okay. And but finally, let me add this: the, I had to even introduce the uh, carpenter to the to, rabbit, to building the rabbit cage. cage. <laughs> if, if you observe this, you realize you took out the nail from here. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. were building it wrong before. See. So I had to <laughs> them. And after that, I've led them on to other contracts. Ah, okay. So you see, that's why I always talk about the connectivity. You know, we start mm. one thing, you never know how far you're going to go. Okay, so yeah. guys, like I said, he's not only doing um, rabbit farming, right? They have like a crop thing behind. I showed you some samples yeah. here and stuff like that. And uh, he's going to take us there right okay. now to have a look at that. And then uh, he will also show us um, the pots and then we see. Yeah. So let's go yeah. after you. We just they chase you. Yeah, so I, I hope they won't go out. No, 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 they won't. But let, let, let me add this. Okay. I started this whole thing with two females and one male. Again, the second the second startup. No, the, for the second startup, it was three females and one male. But for the first one. For the fair, the very first one was two females with one male. Wow. And that that was that's what got me the three hundred. Okay. And then this one I. Came with two uh, three females and then okay let's say i went for four females and two males so that i do that that two females yeah, to one yeah. male pairing so from that beginning how did you stop uh inbreeding how did you control it the, you mean the very first one yes because you, you had only one male on the farm and two females yeah right? so after i think it was after I think three or four months i went to buy a different male okay when I started, all I was doing every six months, as mm -hmm. I said, that's why I like to change the meals yeah, to six yeah, months. Every yeah. six months, I try to get a different meal, meal and yeah. even sometimes get a different female. Mm, so mm. I, I started with the two, but I think after six months, I got a new meal. Mm -hmm. And I think after three months, no, no, after the six months, I got a male and a female. Yeah. Wow. I got a, a new feel, a male and female from a different source altogether. Wow. So at least I was a bit confident that the inbreeding and live breeding would not too much of an issue okay so guys here it starts from somewhere here you can see okra being grown here yeah. uh, some purple yeah we have a mango tree right here yeah. uh, we have some plantains yeah and then uh, yeah uh, let's let's go so that we see what you have that is thank you okay so we are here this is the hey this is the chicken farm yeah. a small one here. i like the cage oh the cage is nice yeah, that, that, that is the handiwork of my father <laughs> okay so that did this one you can see one is it brooding the core yeah okay so that is it right now it's a bit dark so i'm using my light and these are a few here yeah. you guys can see them right here they have this also at the backyard so it's a nice mixed farming system they have right here and the younger ones oh and the younger ones okay okay don't be scared it's not a snake it's a camera <laughs> but of course they don't know they don't know that yeah? yeah so that is it that is it right here um what do you use this one for is it like a rabbit uh, actually i think my computer did it so that we will just help in transporting the rabbits rabbits oh uh, okay yeah, so guys I, this I, is I'll, another I'll tip you, i'll show you 
Some, another, someone was asking me how do you transport, transport yeah. uh, so this is one of the ways and yeah. there's another the cage over here that is not being used even that's nice okay so, so this is how he transports the rabbits you made this yourself yes okay so it's more like a rabbit for the mantle <laughs> Uh, Potomanto for you guys who are not Ghanaians, <laughs> Potomanto is a traveling bag of a sort. Uh, so yeah, rabbit Potomanto, this is yeah. nice. Oh damn, this is dope. So you just keep them in there. Oh, and I like the way he has lined inside with this very small one yeah. so that they... So it, yeah, you... Like do you uh, transport all ages in this one? I believe no. No. Why do you have yeah. that one there, the, the other one? Yes, this... For usually... The mm -hmm. smaller ones, but then in case maybe if I have to transport maybe two mm -hmm. adults, I can still do with this. So that one will be in each compartment. And you cover them? Yes. Because it's airy. One thing about rabbits is that they just don't like heat because of the fur they have on their skin. Ah, okay. So, but I feel height-wise, it's not like... Um, okay, one high. thing about them, whenever they are on the move, they are very calm. Okay, so they like to just yeah. go down. Okay, okay, I get that. That is, that is true. So for the guy who asks, uh this is someone's mode of i suggested the yeah. box system and just keeping them at the back of your car if you have one but if yeah. you don't you this is how you can do it and transport them yeah. so you also made mention of the fact that your dad makes the pots yes yeah. uh the water pots the feeding yeah. pots yeah. and we would like to see them and we want to know how much they go for so that we can we can come for them and, and then buy a few yeah. So that we can also come around and buy a few. So before you do that, kindly put out your number for us if we want you for anything. Okay. Okay. Where do we reach you? Okay. I'm located in Teshi, mm -hmm. which is in the greater Accra region of Ghana, mm -hmm. and then the suburb of Chiblo. Okay. But precisely a place called Penny. Okay. Okay. So my number is zero five four nine seven seven six. 882. I repeat, 0549-776-882. It's also on WhatsApp, so you can always communicate. Probably you want to see some samples or whatever, or you have any other questions too, I'm always ready. Disturb him, disturb him, disturb him. <laughs> <laughs> no <Okay>. midnight call. <laughs> but they are, they are pretty heavy, so they are not things the rabbits can just push over, right? No, because no, most, no. the other ones, they, they usually, you yeah. know how they do, they yeah. just turn them over and stuff like that. Yeah, as I always said, you need to steady your animals. Yeah. You know, there are some who are very rowdy. Yeah. No matter what you do. So sometimes, if you observe these bulls, yeah. I think I should get you one. When you observe that a rabbit is very fond of spilling food, yeah. then we need to increase the, ah, the weight yeah. at the top. Yeah, so that it will be a bit difficult for it to do that. Okay, okay. So guys, this is it. One is for food and one is for water. Yeah. This is usually for water. This is usually for food. But this one I have. You can use for either for, yeah. for okay. As I say, okay. if you have a rabbit that because some of them like to play with the drops. Okay. And that's why they turn it over at, at will. Oh. So then you have to give them something like this. So but then with mine, I guess uh, since they are not too hard, we just use and open this one okay yeah okay right. so how much does one go for all right we sell them in pairs the two. okay so that's 10 cities 10 cd for a pair yes okay so guys take a look at it 10 cd for a pair and so do you have them already made or you do it on order okay we have some now so okay if as and when they are out of stock then we do but you, if you, you want do. a quite a huge number so any number you want if you don't have we can always Okay. 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 